guys, it's Sunday. I'm here in my messy studio and I'm going to take one of the sketches that I posted on Instagram and I'm going to convert it into a digital drawing. So I thought this process might be interesting for people who are probably maybe not fully digital and wondering how do I kind of get into that and work in say Photoshop. So I start with a sketch. Okay, so I have a sketch that I posted on Instagram of this little girl and she's running with her wiener dog. I have a wonderful artist friend named Marsha. So Marsha does beautiful watercolors and she has this dog named Molly that I met and she holds her around like a little baby. So cute. Anyways, um, I was inspired to draw a picture of Marsha when she, maybe what she would look like if she was a little girl running with Molly down the street. Probably should have added a tennis ball to kind of show like why is she running because Molly loves her tennis balls so anyways I'm gonna convert this into a digital drawing so I'm gonna show you how do I clean this up um, and how do I initially start this I'm not gonna show you the entire process because I think that would be a very long video so I'm gonna break it up into several videos for you um, side note love this sketchbook um, I got one on a visit somebody gave me one uh, this is made by Pentelic, and I'm not getting sponsored or anything. I just really love their sketchbooks. They, this one, I believe, it cost me about $8 for on Dick Blick. It was on sale. So I'll buy these in bulk because I like them so much. This says it's about 160 pages. This is a 6 by 8 inch sketchbook. fits really well in my purse, so I can carry it around. I just really like the feel of the binding. It just feels really solid, and it's not uber cheapy feeling. So... Anyways, great sketchbook, highly recommend it. Check it out on Dick Blick, Amazon, or wherever you get your art supplies at. Okay, so on to the tutorial. So I'm gonna do a screen recording. So prior to when I started the video, I scanned my sketch in on my Epson um, scanner. Um, it's only an, a letter size um, scanner, flatbed scanner. So you don't have to use necessarily a flatbed scanner. If you've got a really good smartphone nowadays, um, the image quality is great. Just use photo and uh, you take a picture of it and make sure it's level and then you can go ahead and upload it and uh, share it with yourself. Um, so that's how I got started. And then this is the part where you should see it in Photoshop. I wanted to share with you guys how do I clean up one of my sketches, okay? And I use Adobe Photoshop. Um, I also use a Epson flatbed scanner to scan in my original sketches. So everybody's workflow is a little bit different. This one is based on if you do a hand drawing in your sketchbook or your drawing pad and then you want to actually digitally clean it up. Sometimes I'll work just fully digitally but with this one I was having technology issues and I was using my sketchbook and that always works. Okay so I scanned it in my flatbed scanner. You could always just take a photo with it with your smartphone and then you could email it to yourself. You can use Google Drive, Dropbox and then access it on your desktop computer. A couple things I wanted to show you, if you're new to Photoshop, this is one of those things that I always re recommend doing so that your panels will look my, like mine if you're following along. If you go to the upper right hand corner, there's something that will allow you to change your workspace. So there's different types of workspaces. So based on what you tend to do for your workflow, you can set whichever one and I am in graphic and web originally because that's the one I like to use. See, this changes your panels. Okay, so I prefer graphic and web and I switch it there. It kind of cleans everything up. The next thing I want to have you do is you go to edit, you will go to toolbar. So in the toolbars here, most of the times you're not going to see all of your tools in your toolbar. I like to have all of mine there. So what I do is I will click this button, restore defaults. If you don't want to do that, you can click and drag over. So if this is something that you want, you would left click, drag it over. It usually goes with artboards and then it will appear on your toolbar. You do have to click the done button button and then it will update. Okay. So this is my sketch here. When I scan things, by the way, I scan at 300 um, PPI, okay? So make sure if you are planning on, if you want to print this at all, besides just throwing it on the web or something like that or Instagram, make sure it's high resolution. So I scan at 300, okay? So that means that there are going to be 300 pixels, like if I zoom in, these are actual pixels, these little squares. So there are 300 per square inch. Okay. All right. Zooming back out. Okay. 
All right, so how would I go ahead and clean this up? Because you can tell the paper isn't white and I want it to look white. And I've got this weird little funky corner right here that's um, from the flatbed scanner where there was a shadow. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to image adjustments and there's something called levels. You can always hit command L on a Mac or control L. I'm gonna click on, I'll click on that. So your levels dictate kind of your range of values that are in the image. I like to identify what is supposed to be the whitest point. So I will left click on this little eyedropper that's filled with white, and then I can hover over wherever I want it to be my lightest. So I'm just gonna do the middle value, and let me try over here. Yep, that's where I want, because I want this to look like it's white, so I'm gonna left click over here. And I keep left clicking, just be careful if you overdo it, a lot of times your sketch will start di disappearing because it's gonna think that you want those uh, grayer pixels to become white. And I'm gonna do a little bit of adjustment here because I wanna boost my blacks up. I'm gonna actually draw over this. Okay, so now that this part is done, I will hit okay. Then what I wanna do is I'm gonna use my lasso tool. So if you've restored your toolbar, one, two, three, three tools down, it looks like a lasso, cowboy's lasso. I'm gonna left click and hold, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag around this. Okay, so these pixels are selected. This is my layers panel, so right now you can see if it is grayed out, that means that layer has been selected. Okay, now I want to make sure that my set background color, this is my foreground, see where my cursor is? You have a set foreground color and you have a set background color. Okay, they're just squares. So if I left click on that, I want to make sure it is at white. That means that the CMYK is all zero, RGB, 255 for each of those and I'm going to hit OK. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete those pixels. I have to hit hold the command key and hit the delete key and then it will go ahead and remove those. Okay. Alright, I'm going to hit control, I mean command D or control D on a PC. If I wanted to go further, I could go ahead and use my regular eraser tool. Anytime you see this little triangle down in the corner means there's hidden tools. Okay, so that's my regular eraser tool. Go to my brushes here. I have a ton of brushes. For something like this, I might do a hard round brush, which is one of the default brushes, and erase away these lines. Um, I'm not really overly concerned about that. I wouldn't, uh, for something like this, I'm not going to do a lot of cleanup because I'm just going to draw right over it. You can hit Command-Z if you make a mistake. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of the... Here's the thing, because I'm going to trace over this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on the padlock and there's something called opacity and I'm just going to drop it down. So then it just makes it lighter. I'm going to make a new layer. Um, there's a new layer icon. Click on that. I'm going to call it BG for background. I'm going to drag that, left click and hold and drag it below. And then I'm going to use something called my paint bucket tool and I am just going to it with white. Okay. Um, what I did is I tapped the letter X on my keyboard and I just switched the white to my foreground and so it became loaded on my paint bucket tool. The paint bucket tool works as all the pixels that are the same. When you left click in that area it's going to fill with that color. Oh see and I like to do that because look right here there's a part of that I didn't notice. It's probably a page the corner of it. I just do the delete thing. So anytime you use one of these selection tools, you'll see the marching ants. You can select it, and then I hit Command D to delete. Okay, so now I have something that's a little bit lighter, and I can draw over it. Let me double click on my layer's name, and if you just double, double right click, I mean double left click, you can go ahead and rename that. Okay. So that is how you would go ahead and clean up your illustration and drop the opacity. So now it becomes like, like tracing paper. Like back in the old days, you would use a piece of tracing paper and then you could transfer your image, you'd use a light table. And so when you work digitally, it kind of cuts down on having to use those other tools that I would have used back in the old days. So hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to have some more tutorials um, about how I work in Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator on my illustrations. Thanks for watching.